today's video is all about Christmas ornaments. We will be showing you over 35 ideas for quick and easy ornaments. So let's get started. Hey y'all, let's craft. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use some of these old wine corks that I got from the thrift store. I didn't pay $4 for them. I got them at Goodwill Outlet for about 50 cent. You can also get wine corks at Hobby Lobby. Some ornament hooks that I got from Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. Some Christmas charms from Hobby Lobby. I got these for 50% off as well. That still makes them $4, but you get about 30 charms in this some jump rings and some eye screws. I get these from the jewelry department at Hobby Lobby. Some beads and some bead caps. I like using these beads that you get in the interior section at Hobby Lobby. They already have the little hooks in them. So all you have to do is unhook them from each other. You can even get the ones that have pearls in them as well. I picked out a couple of my wine corks. I will end up using them all, but we're only gonna do two right now. I got a couple of bead caps for each one of my wine corks, and I do mash them flat so that they will fit on the top. Then all you have to do is use your little eye screw and screw right into the middle of it, and it's going to hold it down in place. Now the bead cap's going to keep this from pulling out real easily, and it also gives it some decoration. We're gonna do one on each end. Once you get your eye screws in there, then we are going to take one of our little beads and one of our jump rings, and all you do is hook the jump ring through the bead and then hook it through that eye screw, and you're going to twist it back together. Never pull on these, they, it just makes them where you can't use them. Now we'll pick out one of our little charms, and I did switch jump rings. Those other ones were really thick, and that makes a good keychain, but it didn't work so well for this. I got these smaller ones at Hobby Lobby, and they work really well for these little ornaments. Now we're going to hook our charm onto our jump ring, and then close it back up. Now we have an ornament. I'm going to take one of those little ornament hooks. I love these little S-shaped ones. I think they're so pretty. And we'll just feed it around on there and we have our ornament. For our second one, I'm going to go ahead and take off another one of my little beads from my chain. I just twisted that little eye hook thing. I'll put it onto my cork and then I'm going to use this Christmas tree. I'll take my jump ring, use my little pliers and twist it open. You see I just twist. Then I put my little Christmas tree charm on there, add my wine cork and then we're going to twist it back together. Simple as that. Now we'll add our little ornament hook to the top and with that this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these unfinished wood rounds that I got from Walmart. You can also get something similar from the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, some unfinished wood beads. I'm using two sizes, you use what you like, some ribbon and some cording from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some wording that I cut out using my Cricut. I'll also show you in future projects how you can make this if you don't have a cutting machine. An ink pad and a finger dauber. You could also just use paint or a pencil for distressing and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're gonna do is give our wood disc a good coat of paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in white and I paint the front, the back, and the sides. I always choose to do this because I like for it to look the same all the way around. Now I'm going to transfer my wording to my project. I just use a piece of transfer tape, lift my wording off of the carrier sheet, and then transfer it to the project. Now, if you don't have a cutting machine, in future projects in this video, we're gonna show you how you can do lettering even without one. 
I like to give my project a little bit of depth. So I grab my ink pad and my finger dauber and I'm just gonna go all around these edges and distress it a little bit. If you don't have an ink pad, you could use a pencil or some paint to do the same thing. Now I'm going to use my Creative Memories hole punch and punch a hole in the top of my ornament. If you got the ones from the Dollar Tree, this hole will already be there so you don't have to do that. Now I'm going to thread my twine onto a big darning needle and I'll pull it through my ornament. I leave just a small tail and tie a knot. Then I'm going to thread on 15 of my beads and I'm using a little bit larger, a little bit smaller in that kind of pattern. Now, I don't know what size these are. I had had them forever, so I don't know. You just kind of use whatever you like. Once I get those on, I'm gonna bring it around and then I'm gonna tie it into a triple knot at the top of my ornament and trim it off. And then I wanted to add a small bow. So I grab some ribbon and I just take a piece and kind of measure it to my ornament to see how big I want it. And all I do is fold those ends over, take a piece of cord, wrap around the center, trim it off, and you have a cute little bow. Once we get that done, we are just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to our ornament. And with that, this project is finished. Today we are spotlighting over 35 of our best ornament DIYs, including five new projects. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate you. If you are new here, we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wooden stars. I got mine from Walmart, but they also sell something very similar at the Dollar Tree. Some sheet music. I just Googled vintage sheet music and printed out some that I liked. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some Mod Podge, some twine, and some gold glitter. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my star and I chose to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in ink. I was wanting to give it the feel of a midnight sky. I paint the front, the back, and all the sides and then I set it aside and let it dry. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to position my star over my sheet music. I did print it at four inches like my star, and then I just kind of trace around it and cut it out. I wanted to make sure I got as much of the wording as possible. Now we're going to put down a good coat of our Mod Podge. Make sure you get it on there evenly, and I'll place my star down on it and get out any wrinkles or bubbles. To get any overhang that may be, I just take a piece of sandpaper and go around the edges, but always make sure that you sand down. This is going to take it all off. Now I'm going to use my Mod Podge and I just paint a little around the edges of my star and then I put the gold glitter on top of that and kind of dump off the excess and I love the effect that it gives this. It just kind of makes it pop, gives it a little bit of glitter and really ups the ante on how professional these look. The last thing we need to do is add a hanger. I'm going to use my hole punch and punch a hole. If you got yours from Dollar Tree, it'll already have a hole in it for you. Then I'm gonna take a piece of twine, fold it in half, and push it through the hole that I made. We'll thread our ends through the little loop and pull, and that gives us a hanger. I'm going to tie a knot in the end and trim it off, and this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use the end of a five gallon paint stirrer stick. I always keep these when I cut them off. 
a piece of fabric from this old jacket that I got from the thrift store. I love picking up things like this when I'm at the thrift store because you can use them in so many projects as fabric. Waverly chalk paint in white, a graphic illustration marker from Hobby Lobby, and some glitter gel pens from the Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't have these graphic illustration markers, you can easily just use a fine tip permanent marker some twine and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing we're gonna do is paint our wood piece. I'm using Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to do the front, the back and the sides. You'll be able to see this from all sides so it needs to be complete. I think these are so much fun and they're great for the kids. They could make a Grinch, a Santa. Their imagination is the only limit. Now we're gonna take a piece of fabric from that old jacket that we had and I'm gonna trim off that seam and then I will make this even on the bottom. Now all I'm going to do is wrap it around the top of my paint stirrer stick, trim it off where I want it to end and then I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and glue it down. You don't even have to sew this. This fleece will come together and make its own kind of seam there. Now I'm gonna take a piece of twine, wrap it around the top and tie a double knot really tight and then trim that off and then we'll make some fringe just by cutting little slices into it. Cute little hat. Now we're going to take the other piece of that fabric and cut it down into a small strip and then we're going to tie that around his neck and this is going to be his scarf. I did have to pull it a little bit but this fleece stretches so it worked. To make a face, I'm just gonna use a pencil and kind of sketch out the face that I want. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's so great about these projects. Once I get it sketched in, then I use a black permanent marker and I fill in the eyes, the eyebrows. I trace around the nose and fill in the mouth. And then I'm going to use one of the orange gel markers to fill in the nose and a pink one to give him some little spots on his cheeks, you know, rosy cheeks. We'll take a white pen, give him some expression in his eyes, and then use a black marker to give him some buttons on his tummy. The last thing we need to do is add a hanger to this. So I take some twine, thread it through a darning needle, pull it through the fabric, and tie a knot. We'll trim that off, and with that, this project is finished. it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use one of these small grapevine wreaths that I get from Hobby Lobby. You get like six or eight in a package. They're 50% off and they're great for making these little ornaments with. Some greenery from an old garland, some frosted leaves left over from last year, some ribbon and some cording from Joanne Fabrics, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This one is as simple as it comes. All I'm going to do is take my ribbon and I'm gonna make a really simple little bow. I just kind of loop it over itself a couple of times and then we're gonna trim that off. I'm gonna use a piece of this 1 8 inch ribbon that I've had forever. I'll wrap it around a couple of times, tie it into a double knot and trim that off and we're going to have an adorable little bow. Now I'm gonna take a couple pieces of these greenery that I cut off and we're gonna glue those down. I'm gonna glue one on each side. That one had some paint on there, but I think it just kind of makes it look snowy. Then I'm going to take some of these frosted leaves. I love these. I think they came from Dollar Tree. They were a little bit big for my liking, so I just kind of trimmed them down until they were the size that I wanted. Then I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and glue those right on top of my greenery. All this is doing is giving it some depth and a little more texture. Once you get those on, we'll glue our bow right there into the center of this. The last thing we need to do is add a hanger. So I'm going to take some of that cording, I trim it off, tie a knot, making a little loop. Then we will trim that, glue it to the back of our ornament. And with that, this project will be complete.
Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these little frames that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using this sticker that I got at the Dollar Tree. The letters are wooden and look very much like Scrabble tiles. This piece of scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. Some 7 8 inch wide ribbon and also some extra red wooden beads. Both of these came from Hobby Lobby. And finally, this red chalk paint in the color Imperial and also some Mod Podge and a little bit of extra twine. So the first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct this frame a little bit. I'm going to take out these beads and reuse that twine later, by the way. And then I'm going to pop out the back of our frame here. And then I'll just come in and remove all of this backing because I am going to reuse this side. Then I used my red imperial chalk paint and I'm going to give my frame the edges, the side, everything but the back basically, two really good coats of the red chalk paint. And then I'm just going to take my backing and trace it right on top of my paper here, making sure that my lines are going to be straight once I cut it out. I don't want it running a little crooked on the front. And then I'm going to come in with my Mod Podge and I'm going to give the front a really good coat, making sure it's nice and even. Then we'll just press that down, use a little plastic to make sure that we have all the bubbles out. And once it's dry, I'm going to come in and give it a top coat of Mod Podge as well. Now I'm placing on my words. I want to make sure that they weren't going to be impeding the side of my frame and I'm putting on here merry and bright. There was another word in this package but I already used it in a previous project. And y'all know I'm pretty anal about lining up these letters. And so I did take a little time and do this and make sure the spacing was pretty even all the way around. I really love using all of these little frames that they have at the Dollar Tree to make Christmas ornaments to go on my tree. Just inexpensive and fun and nice and bright. And now I'm going to string on my beads. I'm just doing a random pattern of two red beads and then the white bead that came with the frame. And I just used some twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, tie a knot in there. Then we'll pull that up place it through the second hole and tie a knot as well. That's why I chose this frame because I love the fact that it had the holes already pre-drilled there. And I'm just going to put a little hot glue in each corner and reattach the backing to our frame. And it pops in and so it will stay just with that little bit of glue. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to dress it up further with this little black piece of ribbon here. I'm cutting about 18 inches. I'm just going to make a very simple shoestring bow. Pinch it in the middle. Tie it with that twine that originally came on the beads. And we'll use a little hot glue once we get it trimmed up. Attach it to the middle. And there's our completed ornament. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For today's video, I thought we would do something a little bit different. I thought that since we are just coming back from the holidays, maybe we would just make some quick and easy ornaments that would be fun for you or for the kids to make for your tree. I have a bunch of these Scrabble tiles. I collect them from the thrift store, so I've got quite a few. I picked out some words to use on a couple of different ornaments. And for this first one, I thought that we would also use the little holder that you use when you're playing the game of Scrabble. I don't always keep these, but sometimes I do, and I think this one would work for this. I took out the letters for Away in a Manger, and I'm also going to use some nativity buttons that I got from Hobby Lobby. You get these back in the Christmas section, and they're 50% off, so they're only $1.50. Now, as I looked at it, I thought that this little holder needed to be a different color to me it just kind of blended in too much when it was the natural color so i grabbed this furniture repair marker i get these from the dollar tree and i stained the holder and then i also decided to go right around the edges of my letters and just give them a little bit of definition as well we're not really staining them just kind of highlighting them 
Now I'm going to glue my letters together. We're going to go ahead and glue together the letters for manger. And I'm just kind of playing with this as I go to see how I want to lay it out. I wasn't exactly sure. We're going to go ahead and do away as well because I know that I want it to be on top. We are going to stack these words, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted them to fall and where I was wanting to put my little buttons. I grab my buttons and I do use my little wire clippers and go ahead and cut the shanks off the back of them so that they lay flat so I could kind of get an idea for how I wanted it to lay out. And you know, I tried two or three different things. I finally decided that I liked the Holy Family at the bottom next to Manger. So this is the way we're going to end up going with this. I'm just going to take my hot glue and I'm going to go ahead and glue Mary and Joseph and the baby right down there on the bottom. I get it as close to that side as possible. And then we're going to stick Manger in right there next to it. Now, I'm playing with it again. <laughs> Y'all, you just kind of have to get a feel for how you want things to lay. I decided that I liked the little sheep and the donkey on top of the E and R. I thought that was really cute. So I glued those down, and then I'm going to glue Manger into that little scra Scrabble tile holder. Now, we're going to go ahead and glue A and N right there on top of manger. I just kind of spaced them out a little bit. And then I figured out how I wanted a way to lay. I knew I wanted it to be offset. I didn't want it to be right over it because I want to put my angel on the top like she's looking down on baby Jesus. So this is how I ended up laying mine out. Now I'm going to take some twine. This is going to be my hanger. And I just tied a knot in the top, leaving a little loop. And I had one of these wooden stickers from the Dollar Tree. Um, this was the gold stars that come in those packages. And I glued the knot coming out of the top of my star. And then I glued the twine off of the two legs coming down. This is going to make it look like the star is hanging up above our ornament. And I, I actually really loved how this looked. Now I'm just going to kind of pull it down and get an idea for where it needs to be, how long it needs to hang. And then I just flip it up and I glue my twine to the back of my holder and I'm going to trim it off. Now once I get this twine on here, I do figure out that I'm going to need another point of contact besides just that holder because it wants to flip forward when you... um hang it up we're going to trim that off and now here's where i was holding it up and i can see that it needed it so i just put a little dot of glue on my angel and on one of my little scrabble tiles and i did the same thing on the other side and then this project was finished Hey y'all, it's Trish. In last week's video, we took some shower curtain rings from the Dollar Tree and made some adorable little wreath top ornaments to go on the tree. At the time, I mentioned that I thought you could use two of these and put them together and make a really cute snowman ornament. So today I thought, let's just give it a shot and see how it turns out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one of those shower curtain rings. Well, actually you're gonna use two of them. And I put a little bit of hot glue there in that little divot area where they join together. And then I'm going to use some of this chunky white yarn from Hobby Lobby. I got it when it was on sale for 30% off. I put a little bit of hot glue on there and then I just start wrapping until I get it completely wrapped. And I put another little bit of hot glue on it to secure it. Now you notice that I left a tail on that first one. You want to leave a tail hanging off of one of these so that we can join them together. Now we're going to wrap our second ring and we'll glue that down. Then we're going to take our two rings and glue them together. And then we will take that little tail we left and we're going to wrap it through there about three times and secure it with a little more hot glue and trim it off. And we have a simple little snowman. 
To decorate him, I'm gonna use one of these little top hat ornaments. I got these from Walmart. You get three for $1.97 and they are just perfect for this. I'm gonna take that clip off the bottom. We don't need it. But before we put it on, we're gonna go ahead and add a hanger. I took a little piece of ribbon and cut off about a 10 inch piece. And then I looped it around the top and I pulled it as tight as I could trying to get my yarn to come back around it and I tie a knot in the end and that gives me a hanger. Now you can still see that ribbon and when I cut my yarn, some little fluffy pieces came off. So I just took my hot glue gun and I glued those fluffy pieces over that piece of ribbon there and you couldn't even tell it then. It just covered it perfectly. Now I'm gonna use some of this checked ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a piece of it. I think it was about 16 inches long and I wrap it around the middle there, what would be his neck, and tie it into a double knot. We're gonna adjust it a little bit, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to hold down those ends so that they hang the way I want them to. We'll trim it off, and we have a cute little scarf. Now we're gonna take that top hat, put a little bit of hot glue on there, glue it to the top, and once you put that on, this project is finished. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of the unfinished wood sled ornaments from the Dollar Tree some scrabble letters i get mine from the thrift store but you can also get these at craft stores a wooden snowflake from the dollar tree some distress ink and a dauber some waverly chalk paint in white some rust-oleum gel stain i got this from the dollar tree some ribbon some florals and greenery that i had on hand some mod podge some iridescent glitter and my glue gun and some glue sticks so I am going to be painting this sled, but I'm going to be doing it in a distress style. So I wanted to give it a coat of stain on the bottom so it would have that beautiful wood look. And I decided to try this gel stain that I had found at the Dollar Tree a few weeks back. I was excited about this stain, but y'all, I have to tell you the truth, I hated it. It is so messy. It's sticky. It got everywhere. It didn't smooth over really well it does have a smell it's not as bad as regular stain but it's way worse than watered down paint or the stain markers that i normally use from the dollar tree i can tell y'all i will not use it again i covered this and left it to dry once my stain was dry now i'm going to do some painting i took my waverly chalk paint and a chippy brush and i went over this with a heavy hand i wanted it to be mostly covered but i wanted it to look like it had been well loved used often and that the paint had wore off then i also took a small paint brush and painted my snowflake and then I used some Mod Podge and put over the top of that and added some iridescent glitter. I wanted my letters to stand out and this is not a necessary step, but I ended up taking some distressing ink and a blender and just kind of went around the edges and stained them just to make them pop out some. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with my snowflake, just kind of hit those edges so that it pops out a little bit. I loved how my sled looked with the white paint, but I was afraid that the snowflake wasn't gonna stand out on it. So I ended up grabbing some Waverly chalk paint in crimson that I had and going over it with a pretty heavy hand, still keeping it distressed, but adding that red and then also still letting the white shine through. And I was actually pretty happy with it. 
Now that everything is dry, we are going to add our snowflake and our letters. I did want my letters to be kind of wompy. I, I like how that looks. And then I just used a little bit of hot glue to glue them in place. To decorate the top of this, I wanted to make a bow and we're gonna keep it pretty simple. I just took a piece of ribbon. I made two loops on each side just by wrapping it around. Then I take some twine, pinch up that center and wrap that around and tie it into a knot. We're gonna fluff it up and dovetail the ends and we'll have a cute little bow for our ornament. Now I'm gonna use some greenery that I had left over from last year and I'm just gonna kind of glue it up there at the top and then I'll glue my bow right into the center of it. Once my bow is down, I'm gonna use some of that frosted greenery that I got from the Dollar Tree. I cut off a couple of sprigs and I glue one on each side right under my bow. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of those frosted branches. I'm not sure this really gave it much, but I used one on each side. I grabbed those little berries that I had in a bunch and I cut off two pieces of it and glued those in right under my bow. We're going to put our hanger back in there. I just thread my twine through the holes, tie a knot in each end, trim off the excess, and with that, this one is finished. This is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this smaller bamboo ring that I got at the Dollar Tree. You could also use an embroidery hoop. These were just much cheaper and I was happy to find them. I'm also going to be using this wooden J and wooden Y. They came from Hobby Lobby in a package just like the U that is on the left there. I wanted you to see how they come. I'm going to be using some of this fabric that I got last year at Walmart in the Fat Quarters some folk art chalk paint in the color Imperial, which is a beautiful red. These ribbons that I got at Hobby Lobby, the one on the right is wired. And I'm also going to be using some of this burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a bit of this greenery. It is a candle ring that I got at the Dollar General. I'm going to use one of these pine stems. Mine came from Hobby Lobby, but they sell something very similar at the Dollar Tree. And finally, I'm going to be using some Fabri-Tac and my hot glue gun. First thing I'm going to do is check my placement for my letters to make sure everything will fit pretty much inside the circle. And then I go ahead and cut out my greenery to make a wreath to be my O in the middle. And then I'm just going to cut that off with some wire cutters and then just twist it down on itself. And the next thing I'm going to do is come in with my chalk paint and I'm going to paint the inside of the circle, the outside and the edges with the red paint. And I'm also going to paint the J and the Y in the red as well. You could also use green. I just chose not to because my tree is always green at Christmas. And I like my ornaments to stand out from the tree. And now I'm going in with my Fabri-Tac and I'm going to coat the back side of my bamboo ring all the way around and smooth that down. Now I'm just going to lay out my fabric and I'm going to center my ring there place it down. It doesn't take too long to set up, but you do want to kind of hold it. And while it is setting up, you can pull it nice and tight. And then we'll go in and of course cut out the fabric. I'm just going to cut as close around the ring as I can. I'm going to cut a piece of my burlap ribbon. I'm going to cut it a little bigger than what I actually need, but I'm just going to make sure I have enough that I can wrap it around on the sides and attach it later. I'm going to attach my little wreath right in the middle of my piece of ribbon just using my hot glue. And then once I get that down, I'm going to place down my Y and my J to the right and left to spell joy, of course. And now I'm going to make a simple bow to go on my wreath. I'm just going to tie two bunny ears together and just pull it tight and cut off the ends. And then we'll use hot glue to attach it down to the top of my wreath here. And now I'm just going to attach it to the side. I'm just making sure my placement is correct and that everything is centered. And then we'll just use some hot glue to attach it there to the edges. And then once I get that done and the glue dries, I'm going to come in and trim those edges. And there's what it looks like so far. I'm going to make a simple tie to hang it on the tree. I'm going to use some jute 
tie it in a knot and glue it to the back. And now to decorate the top, I'm going to make a bow out of my wired ribbon. I'm just doing a simple four loop bow, twisting it in my hand. And then I'm going to use a little piece of floral wire and I'm going to twist it around the middle so that it's nice and tight. And then I'll just cut off that excess wire on the back. And of course, every bow needs fluffing and trimming. Once we get it like we want it, we're going to attach it here to the top. And I'm going to hold it till it sets. I'm going to cut a couple of these leaves off of this candle ring. And I'm going to attach one to the right and one to the left, just right under our bow there. And the only thing left to do is cut off some of those berries. And then we'll take the berries and that's how we'll decorate the middle of the bow. Placing it down with a little hot glue. And with that, our project is complete. For this ornament, I thought we would use one of these terrariums from the Dollar Tree to make a diorama. We're going to use one of these bottle brush trees, one of these Santas that came from the craft section at Hobby Lobby, some iridescent writ rack, and I'm going to use some of this sparkle snow trim that I found at the thrift store. But y'all, you can use the snow drape from the Dollar Tree. It would probably work even better. You wouldn't have to go through all of this. Since it didn't fit, I had to glue those ends together. But y'all, I'm trying to use this, so I didn't really mine once I got it glued I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue it right into the bottom of that little terrarium you just want a snowy bottom now I'm going to have to remove the bottom from my tree because it doesn't quite fit in there now I'll put some glue around that wire and stick it in the back and hold it until it sets once we get that set, I'm going to take my little Santa Claus and I'm going to glue him in there right in front of it. Y'all, there's so many cute things that you could put here. You could use one of those little gnomes that they have. You could use a reindeer. There's tons of things that would make these just adorable. Now, I decided to take some of this iridescent rickrack that I had and glue it around the opening of my terrarium. I thought it was going to give it something extra, and it does. It's cute. It didn't turn out exactly like I had in mind, but it's okay. Um, I didn't take it back off, but if I was doing it again, I'm just not sure if I would actually put it on there. Now, for you, of course, you do whatever you like. You could use rickrack. You could use ribbon. You could just leave it open without having anything around it. I don't think this took away from from it it just wasn't exactly what I had in my mind you know now that we've got that on there I decided to take some of this faux snow from the Dollar Tree and I just poured some in there just to give it more of a snowy look now I'm going to use some of that Believe ribbon. I think I got this from Dollar General. And y'all know I have been crushing on this ribbon this year. I've used it for so many things. And I'm just making a simple four loop bow. I had two bow, uh, loops on each side. And then I take a small piece of ribbon, wrap it around the center about four times, and tie it into a double knot. And that gives me a bow. Now I'll put a link down below to the video where we show you how to make simple bows, just in case you couldn't see what I was doing because I know I kind of got off camera with this. We're going to adjust it and then use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right there to the base of that loop. For a hanger, I'm going to use some of this gorgeous um, cording that I got from Joann's. I cut a piece, fold it in half, and pull the loop through that little loop on the ornament. Then I pull it tight, tie a knot in the end of this, leaving a loop. We're going to trim it off and with that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use these foam dice from the Dollar Tree. They're back in the kids section and you get four in a pack. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, some eye screws, I got mine from Hobby Lobby, some pine garland ties from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon of choice, I ended up using the glitter, some Mod Podge, a glue stick, 
some photos of choice. You will need five for each ornament. They need to be 1.4 inches square. I did mine in a Word document. That's how I sized them down, but there's lots of programs that you can use to do this as well. Since I printed mine on an inkjet printer, I need to seal them, so I'm going to use some clear acrylic sealant from Hobby Lobby. Some berries from Ollie's and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was paint my ornaments. You're only going to see the top of this. One of them will be the top and then the sides. So you don't actually have to paint the whole side if you don't want to, but I was afraid that those little dots might show through my photo and I didn't want to ruin them. So I did go ahead and I painted all sides of these with a good coat and then left them to dry. While our paint was drying on our little blocks, I went ahead and I cut out all those little photos and it did take a few minutes, but it wasn't really that big a deal. And then I'm going to use a glue stick and attach them to my dice. Now I chose to use a glue stick instead of Mod Podge because Mod Podge sometimes can cause bubbles and wrinkles and I never have that problem with the glue sticks, but you can totally use Mod Podge if you would rather do that. We are going to put a photo on each side of our block and one on the bottom. You're just going to leave one side open and that's where we're going to be putting our hanger and doing some of our decorations. Y'all, I have to say, I love these ornaments. They turned out even better than I thought they would and I love how you can personalize them to each person in your family. I did one for each one of my grandchildren and one for my husband and I and I just can't get over them. I'll probably end up going back and getting some more dice and doing some more. I think these would be perfect for the kids as well. Let them cut out whatever pictures they would like to put on the side. They could choose pictures of themselves or of their favorite cartoon characters. You could even put names on one side or monograms. There are so many possibilities when it comes to these little ornaments. Once I got all of my pictures on there, now I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the top of these and just seal them in. Now, this is why I had to seal my pictures. When you use an inkjet printer, Mod Podge will cause the ink to smear if you don't seal it. You can use hairspray for this, but since I had my clear acrylic sealer on hand, I went ahead and used that. If you get them printed somewhere that has a laser jet printer, you don't have to do that. Now, once our Mod Podge is dry, we're going to start adding our hangers on here. I marked the center of my dice at the top, and then I just take my little eye screws and screw them right in. Since this is foam, they went in really easy. I got my eye screws from Hobby Lobby, but you can get them at Home Depot, Walmart, pretty much anywhere. Once those are in there, I take a piece of ribbon, I think I cut it about 10 inches, and I pull it through that little eye screw, and then I tie a knot in the end of it, and that gives me a loop for hanging. Now I'm going to take a little piece of that pine garland tie that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I just wrap it around that eye screw, and then glue it in place so that it'll stay, and I cut off some of my little berries, and I glue two on each side, and that gives me my adorable little ornament. Now I'm going to show you this again. It's so easy, y'all. You just use any ribbon that you want. These personalize so beautifully and you're going to put those through your little hooks there make them as long as you want I, I used about 10 inches and I thought that turned out about perfect but I did have these on a small tree if you're using them on a bigger tree you may want to use longer ribbon for my pine garland I just cut it in thirds and it worked perfectly for these little small dies and then I use two of my little berries on each side. And once you get those glued onto all of them, this project will be finished. These Ray Dunn inspired farmhouse tag ornaments from Raspberry Avenue Design Company are really cute, but four of them is going to cost you $19. 
we're going to do these for a lot less. We're going to be using some wood tags from the Dollar General. You get eight in a pack for $1.97, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some small unfinished wood beads, some twine, some wording of your choice. I went ahead and sketched mine out for dimension, some ribbon from the Dollar Tree, an Arteza gel pen in white, some chalk, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is paint our little ornaments. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in ink, but you could also use the chalkboard paint from the Dollar General. It would work just as well. I'm going to paint the front, the back, and all the sides of these and leave them to dry. It only took one coat to get a good coverage. Now that our paint is dry, we're going to add our wording. I did go ahead and sketch mine out because I was afraid that if I just started doing it with the pen, I would get my dimensions wrong and I would end up having to paint over it and start over. And this was just easier for me. But you could skip this if you don't want to have to do that. If you don't trust your handwriting either, you could also type these up using like the skinny font and then transfer them to your ornaments the same way I'm doing here. I just screwed some chalk on the back then I place it on my ornament trace over it and it puts my lettering onto my ornament now I'm going to use my Arteza white gel pen and fill these in if you don't have these pens I actually love them but if you don't have any of them you could use a paint pen or a chalk writer or you could just use paint and a small brush to fill these in I love how versatile these little ornaments are. You can use any words that you want. I chose hope, peace, Noel, and joy, but you could use like Mary or use your family member names and make these personalized ornaments, and I think they would be super cute. I went ahead and picked out 12 of my small beads and I cut four of my pieces of twine at about 12 inches long. Now I'm going to take my twine and I feed it through the hole of my tag and then I'm going to tie it into a knot at the top. I'm going to feed on three of my unfinished beads and tie a knot at the top of that and then I'm going to tie another knot at the end of it leaving a loop and that's all there is to this. We'll do that one more time. We'll put our twine in, tie a knot, put our three beads, tie a knot, then go to the end of the twine, tie another knot, and leave a loop. You're going to do this for each one. I'm going to use my lighter and burn off those little hairs. I think that that just gives it a more finished look. And then we're going to make our bows. To make our bow, I take my ribbon and I fold the ends over each other and then I pinch it up in the center and that gives me a loop on each side. I take a piece of twine, wrap it around the center a couple of times and tie it into a knot, trim off the ends and we have a bow. We'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right to the top of our tag. We're going to do that one more time. I take my ribbon, fold the ends over each other, making two loops, pinch up the center, tie a piece of twine in the center, then you're going to trim off those ends, adjust your bow, glue it to the top of your tag, and once you do this for all of them, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this small frame that I got at the Dollar Tree recently. I'm going to use some white Waverly chalk paint, a small piece of this pink and white striped fabric, some scrapbook paper that I got at Michael's. It is called Sugar and Sparkle, and I will be using this one sheet. Some faux fur trim ribbon, some light pink tulle ribbon, one really tiny screw eye, some fake pearls, one rose for trim, and also my hot glue gun. So the first thing you want to do is remove, first of all, the stickers off of this frame, and then I'm going to remove the hanger at the back, and then I'm just going to deconstruct the frame, clean up those edges with a screwdriver and remove the excess glue, 
Then I'm going to remove the center part, take the paper off of it, and then I'm going to take the paper off this backing as well. I like my projects to look as finished as possible, and it really doesn't take that long to go through this process. And now I'm going to give my frame, the inside, the outside, the front, and the back, a really good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I had to come back and touch up some areas, so it did take about a coat and a half to get really good coverage. And then I'm also going to paint that little centerpiece that I pulled off the frame. I'm going to paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint as well. And at first I painted the whole thing, but later you will come back and see me take off the larger part and just keep the one part. And while our Mod Podge is drying, I'm going to go ahead and apply a thick heavy coat of Mod Podge onto the background part of my frame. And I'm going to straighten up my fabric there and make sure it's lined up, that my stripes are not wonky. And then I put a coat of Mod Podge on top as well. And then I'm going to cut out one of my Santas from my scrapbook paper. And then I'll go off camera and fussy cut him out. And this is when I decided my Santa was a little small for that big piece. And so I break off the backing and just use the little chunky part and glue it to the back of my Santa. Now I'm going to put a dot right in the middle of the top of my frame and then I'm going to screw in my screw eye at the top. Then I'm going to take a piece of those pearls and cut off a section. Then I'll use some floral wire, twist it around the bottom and reseal it and then wire it down to the screw eye at the top of my frame. Then I'm going to make a simple bow from this faux fur I'll use a chenille stem to secure it there in the middle and just trim up that piece. Then I'm going to take a piece of this pink tool and fashion it into a bow and then use my chenille stem to wire it down on top of my fur bow as well. And then when I get that like I wanted and fluffed, I'll just cut off the excess and poke down those wires into the bow. And then I'm going to take a little hot glue and place a rose right in the center to hide the chenille stem. Now I'm cutting off the excess because my fabric has dried. Just trimming up the background and then we'll replace it into our frame. And once we get it popped in, we'll add a little hot glue to secure those corners. And now I'm going to place my Santa in. I'm just going to center him from top to bottom and side to side into my frame. And then all that is left to do is to place our bow on top with a little hot glue there as well. And with that, our little piece is complete. This would look cute on a tiered tray or just simply hanging on the Christmas tree. Happy Christmas in July, y'all! Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use some of this white tool with silver glitter from Hobby Lobby. It's $3.99 a roll, but they put it on sale for 50% off every other week. One of these silver filigree wings from the jewelry section. These are by Jewelry Shop. They are at Hobby Lobby. It's $3.99. You get five in a pack, but they put them on sale for 50% off every third week. Some silver cording from Hobby Lobby. This is in the ribbon section, 50% off, so it was a dollar. Some silver beads from Hobby Lobby. This was in the ribbon section, 50% off, so $2, and there's a lot of these. One of these white foam vase filler balls from the Dollar Tree. This was in a pack of white and silver, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So we're going to need to cut our tool into strips. And I have found that the easiest way to do this is to find something that is about the length that you're going to want to cut on and then wrap it around as many times as you need to. I'm using this little golden book. It was eight inches long and this is going to give me 16 inch strips. I wrapped it around eight times, but I don't end up needing that. We are going to cut the bottom of this and this is going to give me my strips. I am making an angel. I have a friend who loves them and this one is perfect for an ornament or you can use it as a gift topper for a special gift. 
Now that I have them cut, I'm kind of gathering them up in the center and testing them with those wings, but I found that it was too thick. So I'm just going to use five pieces of my tool. You don't need to wrap it as many times as I did. I only needed five pieces. Then I'm going to find my center and scrunch it up into the middle. I'm going to take a little piece of that cord and tie it right there in the center as tight as I can get it into a knot and then I'm going to trim it up. This is going to help hold it whenever I put it over my wings. Now I'm just going to fluff it up a little bit trying to adjust that cord making sure it's in the center. It wasn't. <laughs> Now I'm going to take my wings and I stick them on there and I just kind of form this around those wings. Then we're going to use another piece of that cording and I'm going to wrap it right under the wings, kind of like a high waist, about six times tied into a double knot and then trim that off. Don't throw away those pieces though, we'll use that. Now I'm just going to fluff it up and I saw that I didn't have my tool centered, but that's okay. We're just going to trim it up. And then we're going to take that little foam ball and we're going to glue it on for the head. I'm just going to use a drop of my hot glue. This one had like a little hole or something in it, so I made sure I put it on the bottom and it worked out just fine. We'll hold that there until it sets. Then we're going to take some of these little silver beads and we're going to use them for a halo. I measured it around to see how many I needed and I ended up with about eight, I think is what I counted. I'm going to put a little drop of glue on the back of her head and put down one end. Then I put another little drop next to it and then wrap it around and glue in the other end. And this is just going to kind of make it around her head and I left it popped up to look like a halo. For a hanger, we're going to take that piece of cording that we cut off, tie a knot in it, making a loop, and then we're just going to glue it to the back of her head with a little drop of glue, and with that, this project will be finished. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. For this ornament, we're going to use one of these cheetah print slippers from the Dollar Tree and one of these ball knobs from Hobby Lobby to make a gnome ornament. I made something similar to this last year, but my granddaughter loves cheetahs, so when I saw these, I knew I had to make one for her as well. We are going to do this one a little bit different than the one we did last year. We're just going to start by opening up that seam at the back of the slipper. You're going to cut down that. And then I just kind of followed it around and rounded it off to start making my beard. Now, you see that I'm playing with it, kind of pulling it out, seeing how I want the hat to look. And of course, I wanted it to be more pointed. So I turned it inside out and I cut it so that I had a point there at the top. Now I'm just going to put quite a bit of hot glue in there and press it down and let it completely dry. Once it's dry, we're going to flip it right side out again. But make sure that it's dry because it's going to pop open if you don't. I did have to repair mine in one little place. I used my scissors and kind of got my point back. And then I decided I wanted my hat to be cut a little bit shorter. So you can see that I just kind of go in and I cut back some of those pieces. And you do have to put hot glue in there because it makes two pieces when you do that. And you want to seal them together. And then I just kept cutting it back until I was happy with how big my hat was. Now I'm just going to kind of trim around there and take some of that fur out that is on the inside of that slipper. I didn't want it to show around my nose so much. So I just kind of kept trimming around until I was happy with how that looked. 
Once we're happy with that, I'm just going to use some hot glue on that ball knob and glue it right there into that little curved part of that slipper. That works out perfectly for this. Then I just kind of pull it down a little bit, push the little fur under there, and then glue it so that it all fits down around there. And voila, we have a little gnome. I didn't like his beard being so long. You could totally leave it this long if you wanted to, but I just trimmed mine up. I just kind of cut it down, and then I had to glue those two pieces together. And now once we get that part done, I decided he needed a little pom-pom on his hat, so I glue one right there to the very top. To make a hanger for this, I'm just going to use a little bit of twine. I put it through my darning needle, and then I pull it through the back of this. And once I get it pulled through, I'm just going to tie it into a knot at the end. This leaves a loop. We'll trim it off, and once we do that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Y'all know I have been loving making some ornaments, so I ordered a box of these little mini embroidery hoops off of Amazon. You get 12 in a box, and I think I paid like $11.99 for it. If I can find the link, I'll put it down below if you are interested in purchasing some. We are going to use these and all different kinds of bits and bobs that I have. I have some greenery, some fabric, some ornaments, some you name it, we've got it. And I thought that we would make some ornaments from it today. Now we're not going to do all 12, but we are going to do nine. So I'm going to give you lots of ideas. For this first one, we're just going to unscrew that little screw at the top. This loosens it up. And then I'm going to turn the center piece until it's across from it. And this is going to make like a little orb. Then I tighten up that screw and that's going to hold it in place. I did go ahead and put just a little drop of hot glue there though, just in case. You never know. Now for this one, I decided I wanted it to be white. I am going to paint a couple of these. I will stain one of these, but most of them I'm just going to leave natural. This is to your taste. These are just ideas. You do it however you like and whatever matches your decor. So I grabbed my Waverly white chalk paint and I gave this orb a good coat of paint on the inside and the outside and left it to dry. Now that it's dry, I want to hang a tiny little ornament inside. I was going to use one of these from the Dollar Tree, but then I remembered I had this box of ornaments I had gotten from the thrift store. So I pulled it out and I found a red and gold one that I liked better. I am going to use one of those little gold cords from that pack though to hang this with. I just string it through there and then I bring it up through the top and I tie it. Now, y'all, I probably should have done this a different way, but it ends up working. I put a little drop of glue there and it held it in place perfectly. We're going to trim that off and we have a little orb ornament. Now to hang this, I'm going to use some of this cording from Joann's. I cut off about 11 inches and I tie a knot in the end and trim it. Then I looped it around the whole screw. I should have looped it through it and I will in the future. But on this one, I looped it around, pulled it through and it held fine. I used a little bit of glue and it worked. I'm going to use a little piece of the um, pine garland ties that you get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it around that screw just to give it a little greenery. And then I'm going to use some of these little foam, um, their vase filler balls that you get from the Dollar Tree. I've got all different colors. I'm going to put two red and one gold on each side. And when I get those glued on, this ornament will be finished. Now we are going to move straight from one into the next one of these. I will show you at the end what they all look like, but I thought it would be easier to just keep going. 
For this one, I'm going to use a piece of lace. This came off of an old dress that I got from the thrift store a while back. I've been using pieces. I just pulled it across the bottom or the inner hoop, and then I put the outer hoop on top of it, and I tightened up the screw as much as it would tighten. Now I'm just going to use a pair of trimming shears. You need the small ones to get close to it, and I cut this lace as close as I can get it to that hoop, and it's going to hold. Now, I love these wooden snowflake um, stickers from the Dollar Tree, so I grabbed one of those and I used a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. I never trust that little sticker on the back. I always take it off. Now, I wanted to give this a little bling. Y'all know me. I can't leave anything just natural, so I grabbed some Mod Podge and I put it on the metal part of this um, embroidery hoop and then I dipped it into my faux snow and it gave it just a little bit of shimmer which I love. Now I'm going to use a little bit of white ribbon. This is what I chose for a hanger. I cut 11 inches, tie a knot in the end. Y'all going to see me do this nine times. <laughs> I push that loop through that screw, that little opening there, and then I pull it through itself and that finished that ornament. Now for the next one, I wanted to use another one of these little snowflakes, but this time I'm going to paint it white, and while it's still wet, I'm going to put a little bit of iridescent glitter on it just to give it some shine. Then I decided to go ahead and paint this hoop as well, so I'm using that same Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm going to paint the inner and the outer part of both sections of my hoop. Once it's dry, I'm going to use some fabric. This time I'm using some leftover fabric that I've had in my stash for years. I pull it across the inner hoop and then I push the outer hoop on top of it, tighten it up, and then once again we're going to trim it down and get it just as close as you can to that hoop. This is going to hold this in place, I promise you, as long as you get that screw tightened down, it's not going to come out. Now you could use any fabric here. This is just some that I had on hand. Once I get this trimmed off, I'm gonna take my little snowflake and this time I'm gonna glue it right there into the center. That's where I wanted it. It would have been pretty, you know, offset on this one as well. We're gonna use some more of that white ribbon for a tie. I just cut it off, make a knot, thread it through and loop it through itself. And then I'm going to use some of this greenery from the Dollar Tree. This looks like eucalyptus leaves to me, but it's frosted. So I cut down a couple little pieces of it, and I'm going to glue those right there at the top, right under that screw. And then once I get those glued down, I like those white berries that were on there, but I didn't want to use those up. So I grabbed some more of that vase filler from the Dollar Tree. I glued three pieces on, and this ornament's finished. Now this time I'm going to stain my hoop. I want this to be more rustic looking, more natural looking, and you can use anything you want to stain. You could use regular stain, watered down paint. I like to use these furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree. So I grabbed one in Walnut, that's my favorite, and I stained both of the loops. Now I'm gonna use some of this burlap ribbon. I got this from Hobby Lobby. And I am going to put some glue around the hoop this time because this burlap is really open and I wasn't sure that it wouldn't unravel on me. Then I put my outer hoop on and I tighten it down just like I did before. And then we're just going to trim it around right to as close to that hoop as we can get. And we have a burlap ornament. Now for this one, I'm going to use one of these laser cut stars from the Dollar Tree. I have been loving these and I'm just going to hot glue it right in the center. This was really monochromatic, so I grabbed my chippy brush and a little white paint and just kind of distressed around the star and the hoop just to give it some dimension. And now I'm going to use some twine for the hanger on this one, but I do it the same way. I just loop it through that little screw there. Then I'm going to take some more twine. I wrap it around my fingers about three or four times, slip it off, wrap another piece of twine around the center, and tie it in a knot. Then you trim it and you have this cute little twine bow. We'll fluff it up and then we're going to glue it right there at the base of that. Trim those tails and this ornament is finished. 
For this next ornament, we're going to use some of these little mini bottle brush trees. I got mine from Hobby Lobby, but they also sell them at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use one of these little gold deer from Hobby Lobby. Now, I'm taking the bottom off of these. That's how I like to use them. And I'm going to take a little piece of this car washing cloth that I get from the Dollar Tree. I cut it off and I'm going to glue it right there in the bottom to kind of look like snow. I also put a little glue right there on the front and press it down just so that it covers that area too. Now I'm taking my deer and I'm holding him in there so I can see where my tree needs to go. And then I decided to use my awl to punch a little hole right into that embroidery loop. You don't have to do this. That's what I chose to do. Then I put a little bit of glue on that wire and I glue that tree right there where I punched that hole. Now I'm going to do one on the other side of my snow for my other little tree. I just punch a little hole there, put a little more glue on there, and glue it in on the other side. I also decided to put one little drop of glue at the base of that tree, uh, that bigger tree, just to kind of hold it in place. Then we're going to take our little deer and I'm going to put some glue on his feet and glue him right in front. And then I put a little bit on his bum just to hold him in place and it also helps hold that tree there as well. I used a little piece of gold cording that I had from those ornaments for the hanger on this one. We just do it the same way we did the other ones, looping it through. And then I'm going to use some of that frosted eucalyptus um, bush from the Dollar Tree. I cut off a little bit and then I glue it right to the top under that screw. And this gives me a little bit of decoration. This time I'm going to use three of the gold vase filler balls and then this little ornament will be finished. Okay, for this one, we're going to use some more of that red and white cording from Joann's, and we're going to make another hanger and go ahead and loop it through the same way we did the others. But this one, we're going to do like a simple little wreath. I'm going to use some of this pine garland tie from the Dollar Tree. I cut a couple pieces, and I'm going to glue them kind of going around the ornament, but I'm only doing about, I don't know, a fourth of it. Then I'm going to use a little bit of this frosted fern and I'm going to put it on there as well. We're just going to glue it down just like you would, you know, the big embroidery hoop wreaths. We're just making a miniature version of it. I'm going to glue a piece on the other side as well. Then I'm going to use three of those little red filler balls, glue them on, and this one will be finished. This time we're going to make another one of the little wreath ones. We're going to use some more of that cording from Joann's, tie it into a knot, loop it through the screw, making our hanger. And this time we're going to take our pine garland tie and we're going to glue it right there at the top in the center and just kind of have it curve around. I even put a little drop on the ends to hold it in place there. Now I want to use one of those little 3D words. I get these from the sticker part department at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to paint it with my crimson chalk paint and let it dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to use some ribbon that I got from Joann's and I'm going to make a simple four loop bow just by looping it around itself. Then I use a little bit of twine and I wrap it around the center and tie it in a knot and that gives me a cute little bow. We're going to trim it off. Then we're going to take another little piece of that ribbon and we're going to glue right around there just to cover up that twine so you can't see it. Now you could have, you know, you could have just done this in the beginning instead of tying it, but this is how I make it. I'm going to glue that bow right there into the center. And then I'm going to put a little bit of that frosted fern coming out of the edges of it just to give it a little more interest. I thought this was pretty. You could totally leave it like it was, but I like that. And then I use my chippy brush and some paint and I give that little pine garland some um, frost on it. I glue my word on and this one is finished. For this one, it's going to be pretty simple too. I'm going to use some of the frosted fern from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue two pieces right there to the top coming out from under that screw. Then I'm going to use three of those little foam filler balls and I'm going to glue those into the center of it and I think this is cute just like this but we're going to use one of these gem ornaments I got these from Walmart last year 
they hang from these little silver cords. I put a little bit of glue up there to make sure that it held tight. And now I'm going to glue it on. I probably should have put it on before I put my greenery, but oh well, we live and learn. I pushed it through that little screw and tied it into a knot. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there to hold it in place and I trimmed it up. I'm going to put another little bit of glue on the inside to hold it and that's going to give me my little dangling ornament in the center. I'm going to use another piece of that cord that I'm stealing from another one of those little ornaments and we're going to use it for our hanger just like we did the rest and once we get it on this ornament's finished. For our last one, I'm going to use an old sweater from the thrift store and I'm going to use this little banner that I created and printed out on my computer on some cardstock. Now I will put a link to this little banner down below if you would like to have a copy of it. I just printed it out, cut out all of my little pieces, then I punched little holes up at the top, use whatever you have to punch with. And now I'm going to use some Baker's Twine from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to thread my letters onto it, up one side, down the other, until I have them all on there, and it's going to say Mary. Make sure you're careful with this, though, because it's easy to tear. Then I'm going to take that sweater, and I like that cable knitting there, so I'm going to open up that loop as much as I can. I put the inner loop on the inside. Then I'm going to put my banner on top of it because I want that thread to be caught in between those loops, but not the paper. So be careful. Just keep playing with it and you'll get it in there. I put my outer loop on. I tighten it up. Then I'm going to cut off that long piece that was left and we're going to use that for the hanger. Y'all knew we weren't going to waste it. And we're going to take our scissors, cut our sweater as close as we can get it to our little loop there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to glue down the M and the Y and this just helps hold it in place. We're going to add our hanger through there, right there at the top. And then I've had this little piece that I took off of an ornament for a while. I hated the ribbon that was on it, but I like the greenery. So I took it apart. We're going to use that greenery and glue it right there to the top, right under our little screw. And I'm going to take some more ribbon. This is a piece from Joann's. And I'm just going to make a simple little shoestring bow. I loop it over itself, tie some ribbon around the middle, tie it in a knot, and trim it off. That gives me a bow. We're going to trim off those ends and glue it right there in the middle. Now, I do like those little red berries. So we're going to glue one on each side. And then this ornament will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wood planks that I got at the Dollar Tree. They are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. They come six to a pack and it is nice, thick, finished wood. I'm going to be using some of these wooden beads. I got them at Walmart last year. I'm going to use this wooden sticker. I'm using the word joy. This came in a package of stickers that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. I'm going to use one of these Christmas napkins. I got it last year when it was marked down about 90% off and I think they came from the grocery store. I'm going to use this folk art chalk paint in the color Imperial, which is red. I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in the color Malachite, which is a beautiful green. And then I'm also going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint. And finally, some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. I just love how these pieces come in a resealable package and they're just so easy to take out, seal back up, and use later. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the edges of my piece in the red imperial chalk paint. And then I used painter's tape once it was dry around the edges, kind of making a trough so that I could paint both sides in the white chalk paint at the same time. And so that's what I did. I just kind of painted up to the edges. Then I decided I didn't like the white being on the back side and I did come back and paint it in red. 
Once that was dry, I came in with my Mod Podge and I'm going to place one good coat in a vertical direction and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and give it another coat of Mod Podge in a horizontal direction and then let that dry as well. Now I'm just going to cut out my napkin. I was disappointed to find that you can only do two per napkin. And then I have to separate it, of course, into one ply. And y'all, that took forever with this napkin, but I was careful not to rip it, and it did come apart. And then I'm going to place it down, check my spacing. Nope, can't fit all three on there, but I'm going to get as much as I can. And then I'm going to place something on top of it. You could use parchment paper. I just couldn't find mine, so I'm using this Teflon sheet. And I'm just going to iron my piece on. It will reactivate that glue, and it will hold beautifully, and there will be no wrinkles. So then I'm just going in with my sanding block, and I'm just going to take off all the edges of the napkin. Easy peasy. And now let's go in with a coat of Mod Podge on the top of our piece as well and seal it nicely. And now I'm going with my word joy and just cut it right off the plastic. And then I'm going to paint it green because I had forgotten that. I had not decided where I was going to put it or what color. And once it's dry, I'm going to use a little hot glue on the back and just attach it right here to the ornament. It does have sticky back glue on it, but I didn't think it was enough. So I did add a little glue to enforce it. Then I just decide how many beads I want. And I'm just going to use the string that they originally came on tie it in a couple of knots, and then glue it to the back of this piece. And yes, I do have some touch up on my piece on the back because I left the wax paper under there and it melted and it caused the paint to discolor. Don't do that. Make sure you put something hard under there before you start putting on your napkin and ironing it down. And now let's just attach those beads. I'll do my touch up later and this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these round clear ornaments from the Dollar Tree, a flat clear ornament from the Dollar Tree, some alphabet beads. I got mine from Walmart, but you can get them at any craft store, some faux snow from the Dollar Tree, some greenery from an old garland, some berries that I got from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love these clear ornaments. There are so many things that you can fill them with. And for this one, I thought it would be cool to fill it with some of my favorite words. I took these alphabet beads that I had and I pulled out the letters to spell faith. And then I joined them together just by using a little bit of hot glue in between them and sticking them together and they held perfectly. Once I finished Faith, I got to looking and I had some ribbon that said Believe and I had an extra ornament, so I thought it would be cool to do one that says Believe as well. I picked out my letters and then I joined them together the exact same way I did my Faith. I just put a little bit of hot glue in between them. Now we're going to take the cap off of our ornaments and we're going to add some of the faux snow into it, however much you want. I think I did a couple of inches in each one. And then we're going to drop our words in there. You want to kind of move them around, but you can see them from all sides. I drop in some greenery. I put in a couple of those red glitter berries, and then I put my caps back on. I wanted to make a bow for each one, and I'm sorry guys, I was out of the camera's range when I was making this. I didn't realize it, but all I do is take my ribbon, fold it over each other so I have a loop on each side, and then use some ribbon to tie in the middle, and that gives me a little bow. I will put a link to our bow making tutorial up in the cards and down below if you would like to go and look at that if you have trouble with bows. But this one is the simplest bow that you can make. I'm gonna trim off that back and then I glue them to the top of each one of my ornaments at the base of the cap. For the hanger, I just cut another piece of ribbon, determine how long I want it to be. Then I string it through, tie a knot in the end, and once you do that to both of these, this project's finished.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using this vintage Victorian looking frame that I found at Goodwill Outlet for 39 cent. This gorgeous doily that our friend Vicky sent us in some happy mail. One of these totally dazzled pieces. I'm not sure which one yet. Some chalk paint in ivory and ballet slipper pink. Some ribbon and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love using these old frames in different projects. If y'all have been with us any amount of time, you know that I'm pretty much obsessed with them. And when I saw this Victorian looking frame at the outlet, I knew immediately what I wanted to do with it. So we are going to take it apart. It did have a picture in it. I disposed of that and I threw away the glass. I don't need it. And I'm going to paint the base of this or the backing with my ballet slipper pink. Now I do paint both sides. You only see me do this on one, but I wanted it to match. You don't have to paint the back of yours, but I thought it looked better than that bright blue. Now for my frame, I'm going to use my ivory color chalk paint and give it two good coats. Um, again, you don't have to paint this, but I wanted to tone down that gold some and make the detail on this pop out. Once our paint is dry, I use a piece of sanding paper. This is just the sandpaper you get from the Dollar Tree. And I go over this pretty heavy handedly um, to make this detail pop out. Now, it didn't look as gold as before, but I was okay with that. I loved how it looked and I loved the way the detail on this looks. Now let's work on our insert. I wanted to use this gorgeous doily that Vicki sent to us, and I hated cutting it. I'm not going to lie, I did, but I love how the pink pops through this and how gorgeous it looks in the center of this frame. So I did go ahead and glue it down to my center, making sure that I got it as centered as possible, and then I trimmed it up. Now, don't worry, I will use the rest of this doily in some other projects. I will not let it go to waste. Then we just replace our backing back into our frame, and y'all, this thing was tight. <laughs> Now we're going to take one of those pieces from Totally Dazzled and I'm going to use some hot glue and glue it right there into the center of this. To make a hanger for it, I just cut off a piece of ribbon, fold it in half, and we're going to utilize that little loop there on the back of this. I pull it through and then tie a knot in it, leaving a loop, trim it off, and this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little tag that I got from Dollar General. I got this one at the end of the summer season, but they sell these for all seasons for a dollar, and they're the perfect size to make a large ornament for your tree. Some ribbon that I got from Dollar General, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some twine, a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, some wording that I printed from my computer, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my tag apart. I removed the hanger and took off the sticker on the back. Then I popped that little round piece off the front and then I started working on getting this paper off. It was a little difficult, but I used my heat tool and my sanding block and I was finally able to get it clean. Once our tag is completely clean, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and give it two good coats of paint. I am painting the front, the back, and all the sides of this. I don't want any of that pressed board to show. And then I will set it aside and let it completely dry. 
I'm going to use that little piece that I popped off and take a furniture repair marker and I'm just going to stain it black. I stain the front of it, the sides and the inside and leave it to dry. To do the wording on my sign, I'm going to use the method that y'all see us use all the time. It's one of my favorite. I just cut out my words that I printed and then I scribble on the back of them with a graphite pencil. I lay it on my tag and trace over the letters and this is going to transfer them to my project. You could also use carbon paper for this. Once I get my letters transferred to my project, I'm just going to use my graphic illustration markers that I get from Hobby Lobby and fill it in. Now you could also just use Sharpies or any kind of permanent pen. If you have a good steady hand, you could even use paint and a small brush for this. Anything to fill in your lettering and make it pop out. Now that we have our lettering finished, I'm going to take my ribbon and I measure out to see how much will wrap all the way around this. I'm going to remove the wire from this because it was wired ribbon. And then I'm going to glue that little piece back down to the top. Now we'll wrap our ribbon around and glue it down as well. I'll fold under that end so you don't have a ragged end and glue it on top of itself. Then I'm going to take my twine. Because the hanger on this was really thick, I decided to use regular twine. I just measured off a piece, folded it in half, and threaded it through. I tie a knot at the end and trim that off. And then I take that and thread it through that loop and pull it tight, and I have a hanger. I'm going to use some more of that twine and wrap it around my tag about four or five times across my ribbon and then tie it into a double knot. And then I'll wrap it around my fingers about six or seven times and trim it off. We'll slip that off and fold it in half and that's going to give us a little bow. And then I'll tie it into the middle with that string we left and that gives us our bow. We'll fluff it up and trim it off and use a dot of glue and with that this one will be finished. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this old ribbon spool that I saved from the trash some black foam sheet, but you could also use felt, some Waverly chalk paint in white and ink, some leftover greenery and berries from my stash, a snowflake from the Dollar Tree, some black ribbon, some iridescent glitter, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love taking trash and turning it into something really cute that you can still use. And I always seem to have a lot of these ribbon spools, so I thought, let's turn it into an ornament. I removed one side of the spool, and then I just take a pencil and I trace around both the big side and the small side on my foam sheet and cut that out. Now, if you don't have this foam sheet, you can easily use felt or cardstock or even construction paper. Just use whatever you have on hand. Now we are going to paint our spool. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I am painting the tube and only the top part of the bottom part of the spool if that makes sense. You don't have to paint the very bottom because we are going to be covering that. While that dries, I'm going to go ahead and paint my snowflake. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I just paint the top of this. And while the paint is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle over some glitter and then leave it to dry. Before I put this together, I want to go ahead and add my hanger. So I cut off a piece of that ribbon and thread it into a darning needle. Then I just push it down through the top part of that foam and then pull it back up through the bottom, tie it into a knot, leaving a loop, trim it off, and you have a hanger. 
Now we can glue that to the top of our hat. We'll just use some hot glue up there. Make sure your hanger's sticking out. And then we'll use some hot glue on the very bottom and glue on that other piece. Now it's time to decorate. I'm just gonna use some of this greenery that I had in my stash. We'll glue it right there on the rim of our hat. And then I'm gonna use some of these little holly berries and glue those right into the center of that. Now we'll just take that little snowflake and we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue on two of the tips of this and we'll glue it right there. And with that, this project will be finished. y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making a very simple shabby chic Christmas ornament, and I'm going to use some of these plastic glasses that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory, some ribbon trim that has roses and pearls on it. I will be using some of that ribbon that was used to make that trim, and also some of those little roses that I got at Walmart some sheer pink ribbon, and also a bit of grain ribbon, and finally my hot glue gun. These are champagne glasses, and of course they're disposable, and they come in a little pack of six at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of them, and I will not need the bottoms that came with them, and we're going to put them together just like so. But the first thing I want to do is give both of my pieces a really good coat of this Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. I just think ivory works best for shabby chic, but that's just personal preference. And I did paint them separately. This took two coats. Now I'm going to take hot glue and I have it set at a low temp and I'm going to connect these two pieces just with a little hot glue. Now I'm going to take that ribbon trim and I'm going to place it around the middle and that will hide where the two pieces are connected. And then it starts to look more like a Christmas ornament. Now I'm going to take some of that sheer pink ribbon, and after I cut off a piece, I tied a knot in the end. And then I'm just going to take the pieces that stick down and attach it to the sides of the top piece of that ornament, and then I'll glue the knot right down to the top of it. So that just gives it a little extra security. And then I'll just take some more of that textured pink ribbon and attach it around the top, which glues down those sides and hides all of the extra stuff we don't want. And then I'm going to also put a piece on the bottom. Just mirror that. And then I'll place a little tiny ribbon rose at the bottom where the two pieces meet and at the top where the two pieces meet. And then I just had this little grow grain bow to place on top. And there's our finished piece. It's pretty simple, but you could add as much as you want to it. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this rose printed fabric that I got from Joanne Fabrics. This pattern that I printed off, I will put a link to it in the description box below if you would like to have a copy. A stick from my yard, a crochet tablecloth from Goodwill Outlet. You could also use a doily. Some lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Some pearls and buttons from my stash. Some batting. I got this at Goodwill Outlet, but you could also use the inside of an old pillow. My art glitter glue. My glue gun and some glue sticks. And a pair of scissors. So the first thing we're going to do is fold our fabric and pin our pattern pieces down and cut them out. We are going to be making some shabby chic ornaments. I know it's not Christmas yet, that is still summer, but Kay and I thought it would be fun to participate in the Christmas in July series. Now, we are not going to just kill you guys with Christmas projects. We were just gonna sprinkle them in throughout the month. Now I'm going to take my pattern pieces and lay them face up. I put a line of my glue all around the edge making sure I leave an opening so that I can turn these. Then I put the other piece right on top and smooth it down. Make sure these are face to face. Now we're going to do the same thing for our tree. 
I'm using art glitter glue. You could use fabric glue, any glue that you want to use. I don't like using hot glue for this because it makes it hard to turn your project. Once I get it all lined up and pressed down, I leave it for about 30 minutes to dry. Once it's dry, we're going to come back and we're going to turn them right side out. You just pull it through that little opening you left and turn them. And then I'm using one of my embossing tools that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's got one of those round ends on it to help push out those corners. I do that for each of the corners on the tree and for those two corners on the stocking. Then you just want to kind of use your finger and round it out as much as you can. Now we are going to stuff these. I'm using a little bit of this batting that I got from Goodwill Outlet. It doesn't take a lot of this. I didn't want mine really stuffed really hard. I just want it to be a little puffy. Once I had the right amount in there, I turned those edges under. I put my stick into the middle of the tree and then I glue the edges together. Now we are going to stuff our stocking the same way. We're just going to put a little bit of our batting in there. Make sure that, you know, it's filled out pretty good. Then we're just going to turn under those edges. I'm going to take my lace ribbon, cut a piece for a hanger. I fold it in half and glue it to one side. Then I use some hot glue to glue my seam together. Now let's decorate our pieces. For the stocking, I wanted to use some of this lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So I just put down a bead of glue and then I glue it right along the top there. I trim it off and finish up those edges with a little more glue. I thought that some pearls might be pretty on this, so I put down another bead of glue and then I glued my pearls right down on top of it. Now I'm going to take this crochet tablecloth that I got from Goodwill Outlet and I'm going to cut a piece off and use it to trim this. Now this was there I'm sure because it had stains in it and I have washed it and they won't come off but it doesn't bother me. To me it kind of makes it look more old and vintage. So I just trim off a piece that I like and figure out how I want it to lay. Then I use my hot glue and glue down the edges. And then, you know, you just keep trimming and pulling them around until it looks the way you like. You can meet these edges up and it looks like one piece. Now we'll work on our tree. I'm going to cut another piece of my lace ribbon out and glue it right to the top. And then I take one of my little pearls and glue right in the middle. I'm sorry I keep getting my head in there, y'all. I've got to figure out this new table. I'm, I'm not quite used to it yet. Then I am going to decorate this using some of my old buttons. I used some of them that had holes in them and some that had shanks on them. If it had a shank, I used my clippers and just kind of clipped it off. And then I just used some hot glue and glue them right on there. I didn't have a rhyme and reason to how I did this. I just kind of sporadically added them on there until I liked how it looked. Kind of like I do my ornaments on my real tree. Once I finished my buttons, I took that piece of that lace tablecloth that I cut off and I'm going to take some of the pieces of this to trim out my tree. I figured out which edge I liked and then I just kind of trim around, get it as close, you know, as I can so it looks like it's just a solid piece. And then I use my hot glue and glue it right down to one edge. Then I just keep taking that same scrap and I find pieces that I like off of it and trim them up and glue them all around each edge. Now, if you don't have one of these, like I said earlier, you could use a dolly. I see those at the thrift store all the time. Or you could just use lace around the edge of this. It would be just as pretty. And there's our completed ornaments. I love these guys and I can't wait to make more of these. Again, we won't kill y'all with the Christmas projects this year. We're just going to put one or two in each one of our videos through July to give you some ideas to start getting ready because you do want to make these ahead of time. And if you do craft fairs, you might even want to make some for that. For these next ornaments, we're going to use some more of these Scrabble tiles that I pulled out. And I did pull two of the paint stirrer sticks, but I only end up using one. I had it in my head that I was going to do three of these, but I decided to just go ahead and do two. It'll give you the idea and you can do as many as you would like. So the first thing I did was 
pick out my letters for the word Noel and the word joy. I lay them on my stick and find out how long I want it to be. Then I use a combination of my little wire cutters there and my box cutter and I just keep scoring this until it pops off. Now it would have been easier to have cut my saw but y'all was being lazy so I did it this way. Now I wanted to stain those little paint stirrer sticks. So I'm using some Waverly chalk paint in truffle. I just mix it with some water and then I paint it onto my stick and use a paper towel and wipe it off. It gives it a beautiful stain. You can see all of that beautiful wood grain and it dries instantly so it's ready to use. Now I need to put a hole in the top of my little sticks and I'm just using an awl. I got my awl from the sewing department at Hobby Lobby for $2.50 and it will punch through this pretty easily but you could also use a drill. Now we're going to thread some twine through that little hole and I tie a knot right next to the wood and then a knot at the top and this gives me a loop for hanging. We're going to do this on both of them, knot right next to the wood and then a knot at the top. Now we'll take our hot glue and I'm just going to glue my letters on there for my words. I like to do mine at a different angles just to kind of give it a little whimsical look, but you could totally do these straight if you prefer. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge and I just kind of paint it there on the edges and at the top of my letters and then I dip it into this faux snow that I got from the Dollar Tree. Y'all, this stuff gets everywhere, not going to lie. You could use glitter here, but it's going to do the same thing. I just thought it was really pretty. You could also just use regular, you know, Elmer's glue, school glue for this instead of Mod Podge, but that was what I had on hand. Now to decorate the top of these, I'm going to use a little bit of one of those pine garland ties that you get from the Dollar Tree. I cut off a couple of little pieces and I put them right at the top. And then I'm going to use some of these little red berries that I had on hand from other projects. I'll cut two and put it at the top of each one and with that this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these little wooden tags that I got from Dollar General. These come in a pack of five. One of these furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree. A mini Santa hat that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got mine last year, but I did notice today that they're already starting to put out their Christmas crafts. A paw print that I got from the computer. I just Googled Paul SVG a jot permanent marker from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some red and white baker's twine, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This one's going to be quick and simple. I'm going to start off by staining my wooden tag. I'm going to be doing some distressing on this and I wanted this darker color to show through. Now this is completely optional. You could leave it, you know, the natural color if you don't want to distress it or if you want the natural wood to show through. Once I get it stained, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a really good coat on the front and the back and then I'm just going to leave it to completely dry. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to take my paw print and I scribble on the back of it, then I lay it on my tag and trace over it. This is going to transfer it onto my project. Once I got my paw on there, I decided I wanted to add the name as well. So I wrote it on the paper so that I'd make sure my dimensions were right. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to scribble, scribble on the back and then I'll lay it on there and trace over it. And this is going to transfer it to my project. Now I'm just going to use one of my jot permanent markers and fill this in. You could do this with paint and a paintbrush if you prefer. I just like the control I get with the markers. And then I'm going to use a fine tip marker to fill in the name. Now I'm going to take my sanding block and just go over the edges of this and I just kind of distress it, make it look rustic. I like that look and this is why I stained it. 
Now we're gonna take some of our Baker's twine. I cut off a piece, fold it in half, and tie a knot. Then I'm just gonna push the end through there, and I'll take that and pull the ends through the loop, and that gives me a hanger. I'm gonna use one of my little mini Santa hats, and I want it to go on at an angle, so I put some hot glue on one corner, and I glue that down. Then I'm gonna put some hot glue on the back of it and flip it over, and with that, this project is finished. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's make a quick farmhouse Christmas ornament. I'm using this leftover piece from a project from a board at the Dollar Tree, this joy from the Dollar Tree, a big fabric square in buffalo check, some ribbon from my stash, some of these floral picks, some Mod Podge, some fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and a few tools. First thing I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge and generously apply it to my little sign here. And then I'm going to, of course, smooth out my fabric and apply it to this really thick cardboard. This was left over from that scarecrow sign I did. Smoothing it out well, and then I'll apply a coat to the top as well. cutting off about 18 inches of this black and white ribbon, crossing it, pinching it in the middle, and I'm going to use a piece of that thin ribbon to tie right in the middle to secure my bow. And I'll just trim up those edges and fluff it. I'm going to cut off some of this greenery from this floral pig, as well as a few of these berries. Cut off that excess fabric I left. I'm going to glue the greenery to the right and left at the top. Place the bow in the center and send some berries right in the middle of the bow to dress it up. And then I'll apply the joy with some fix all adhesive. And there it is. I hope you enjoyed my quick and easy farmhouse Christmas ornament. At Crafting Cousins, you always find a variety of crafts on our channel. Trish specializes in wood and I specialize in paper, but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, Kay specializes in wreaths and making pretty bows. There's a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this teacup that I got from the thrift store some bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree, these flat back deer buttons from Hobby Lobby, a small wooden block from the Dollar Tree. I'm using this snowflake trim, but you could also use snow drape or batting, anything for snow. A small piece of ribbon and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of those little wooden blocks like you get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue it into my cup. This is going to act as a riser. Now I'm gonna take one of those little snowflakes. I got these from the thrift store, but as I said, you can get snow garland. They even sell that at the Dollar Tree and it would work perfectly for this as well. I'm gonna trim it down till it fits in my cup and then I'm gonna use some hot glue and glue it down to the back and then a little bit of hot glue on the front and you see now it's gonna cover that little block we put in there and we have a heel now. I'm gonna take one of those little bottle brush trees that you get from the Dollar Tree. I thought, you know, let's use a different kind of tree besides just the little Christmas trees. I cut the bottom off of it because I knew I couldn't get that wire into that block and I glued it on top. And now I'm gonna take another one and I take the little bottoms off of it as well. I punch a hole in my snow drape and then I use some glue on the bottom of the tree and stick that wire down into it. And now you see that it's starting to look like a little forest. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side with another one of those little trees. And I love how this looks. How cute is that little forest, y'all? 
Now I'm going to take this deer and we're going to put some glue on his feet and I'm going to put just a little bit on his butt because it touches that tree and this is going to help him stand up. And now we have a scenery. Y'all, you could make these with so many different things. How cute would it be to have different scenes on your tree? To make a hanger, I'm going to take a small piece of ribbon. I tie a knot in it, which makes a loop. Then I'm going to trim off those tails. We're going to take that and we're going to string it through the cup handle and then pull the knotted end up through the loop on the other side and we have a hanger. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these large bales that I got from Hobby Lobby. These were used in the dupe video we did last week and these two were left over. Some twine, some ribbon, some unfinished wood beads, some leftover greenery and berries from other projects, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love these large bales that we got from Hobby Lobby and I wanted to make sure that I used them up. I thought that these would make the perfect rustic ornaments. So I cut a piece of twine about 24 inches long and then I looped it through the hanger on the bale. Now I'm going to take five of those, I guess they're kind of medium size unfinished wooden beads and I'm going to use my furniture repair marker that I get from the Dollar Tree and stain them. Now you don't have to stain these. I actually wasn't going to stain them. That wasn't the original idea. I was just going to leave them unfinished. But we have a lot of dark furniture in our home and I thought that it would just kind of go better with our theme if I stained them. You could also paint these. Once you get your beads ready, you're going to string them onto your twine. Now, I found that it's easier if you put a little bit of hot glue on the end and then kind of twist it together and these will slide right through your beads. Once you get all five beads on, tie a knot at the end to hold them in place. I take a piece of leftover greenery. This came from a garland I had and I just kind of wrap it around the top and then I'm going to make a bow. I take my ribbon and I wrap it around my fingers about three times. I slide it off and pinch it up in the center. Then I take another piece of ribbon. This is going to be my tails and I measure it off and cut that off and lay it flat on the back. I'm going to take a piece of embroidery thread and wrap around the center of this about three times and then tie it into a double knot making sure that I secure this really tight so it holds. Then we're just going to trim off the ends of that and we have a little bow. I'm going to just kind of play with my ribbon. I pull my tails down. I fluff out my loops. You should have three on each side. And then you have an adorable little bow. These are so easy to make and they are so cute on these projects. To attach it to our bell, I'll use a little bit of hot glue and then I'm just going to glue it right there to that greenery right on top. I'm going to dovetail the ends of my ribbon. I just fold them in half and cut it at an angle. And I think that gives it a really pretty finished look. I like seeing it hang down like that. Now I wanted to give it a little bit of color. So I took some leftover berries I had and I cut off a little bunch and glued them right there at the top behind my ribbon. And then I'm going to glue another little bunch right into the middle of my ribbon. Now we will just tie a knot at the end of our twine, leaving a loop for hanging. We'll trim it off and this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pack of these clear acrylic ornaments that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're 50% off, so you get eight for $2.50. They also carry these at Michael's. These designs that I printed from the computer, I will put a link to these in the description box below if you would like to use any of them for your ornaments. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink and crimson. 
a Sharpie oil-based paint pen. I'm using the one with the extra fine tip and a gold metallic marker from the Dollar Tree. Some beads in black, white, and red. I get these from Walmart during the Christmas season. Some ribbon, I'm using red and white, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love to make personalized ornaments, and these little discs make it really easy to do all kinds of designs for your tree. These are really easy for the kids to use as well. You could draw out some little designs or use a coloring book, print out something that you've seen online, and then just let them trace over it and they have the cutest little ornaments. You could also just give them some paint pens and let them draw on them themselves and there's no telling what you would come up with. For these, I designed some prints that I liked and printed it out and all I have to do is lay my ornament on top of it and then I'm using my paint pen to trace over it. Now I'm using a white Sharpie pen and I know it looks like it's not going to show up but we're going to be putting some paint on the back of this and it's really going to make our design pop out. Whatever color you're using, just make sure that you think about the color that's going to be on the back so that they will pop against each other. Now for one of these, I'm personalizing it with our name and the year that we got married. That opens up a lot of possibilities. You could do your name and your um, date that you got married. You could use the kids' names and their birthday. Um, you could do monograms. There's just so many things that you can do with these, and I really love them. Now, if you have a, a cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette, you could cut designs out with vinyl and stick those on here. That would be easy to do as well. We like to show y'all how you can do different kinds of projects, whether you have a cutting machine or not though. And I think that this is a perfect one if you don't have a cutting machine that you can do for really cheap. These also sell really well at craft shows if you are into that kind of thing. So we are going to use our paint pen, paint our designs on there and then give them just a few minutes to dry. You don't want to touch them while they're still wet because they're going to smear. Once our designs are dry, I'm just going to use some paint and I do some light strokes on the back of the ornament. This makes your design pop off on the front. Now, I didn't want mine to be perfect. You notice that I didn't do the whole back and I didn't tape anything off. I want it to look like paint strokes. So I'm just lightly going over the back of it. I'm using half of mine in red and half of mine in ink, but you can use any color that suits your decor. You're just going to brush your paint on there and then leave it to dry. Now that everything is dry, I'm going to use some ribbon for my hanger. You could use that or you could use some cording, whatever you like best. And I found that with my ribbon, it helped me if I would put just a little dot of hot glue on the base of it and then twist it together and it helps me to be able to thread on my beads. For my red ornaments, I'm going to use two red beads and one white bead. I slide them onto my ribbon and then I tie a knot at the top of the beads and then I go down to the base of the ribbon and tie another knot leaving a loop and that will help you to hang it. You could use any pattern for this. You don't have to use wooden beads. It's up to you. There's so many things that you can do with this. I just really thought that the beads made this pop. So for these, I'm going to use the red and white, and then whenever I get to the black ornaments, I'm using white ribbon, and I'm going to switch over to the black and white beads. Y'all, I love getting these from Walmart because they are so cheap, and they're already painted for you, so you don't have to paint them whenever you get ready to use them. Now that I have my hangers on, I wanted to do a little more decorating on these and I didn't have enough red ribbon to do some little bows for the base of these. So for the red ones, 
I ended up looking in my stash and I had some of this frosted fern from the Dollar Tree. So I just cut off some little pieces of it, glue it right there to the base of my beads. And then I put some of these little red berries that I had in my stash right there in the middle of them. I thought that that gave it a cute little decoration for these. Now on my black and white ones, I did have some ribbon. So I'm going to make some fork bows. All you do is take your ribbon, pull it across your fork, wrap it around the back, and then bring it over the top of the ribbon that you have on the front, and then feed it through the two middle tines right there at the bottom of all those ribbons. Pull it up from the back and come through those middle tines on the top, and then you're gonna take your two tails and tie them into a knot, and you're going to have a little bow. These are the simplest little bows and they work perfect on these kind of projects. Once you get it tied, you just slip it off your fork, trim off the tails and use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right there to the base of your beads. I'll show you this one more time. We take our ribbon, wrap it over our fork, then you're gonna trim it off, wrap it around the back, pull it through the middle tines come back up across the back through the top of the middle tines and then tie it into a knot and that gives you a bow. Slip it off, trim those ends and glue it on. And then once you do that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wooden stars that I got in a pack from Walmart, but they also sell these at the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, some wording that I printed out from my computer. Now you can do this freehand, but I never trust myself to get the right dimensions, so I always print mine out. And I will put a link to this down below if you would like to use this particular saying for your project. A pencil, any pencil will do. Some cording, I'm gonna use this that I got from Dollar General. Some leftover greenery that I had from last year and some little red berries. A fine tip permanent marker and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this is going to be a really simple project that I think would be perfect to do with the kids. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint my star with my white Waverly chalk paint. I do make sure that I paint the front, the back, and the sides because you're gonna be able to see this from all sides when it's hanging on your tree. And then once I get a good coat on it, we'll set it aside to dry. Once my paint is completely dry, I come back with a ruler and a pencil, and I'm just going to lightly draw in some lines that are gonna give me the look of shiplap. Then I'm gonna come back with my pencil, and I'm just gonna sketch them in a little bit thicker so they show up better, and I take my finger, and I'm just going to go over it, and this is going to blend it in and give it a softer look. Then I take my pencil and I go all around the edges of my star, and this is just going to distress those edges. I smear those with my finger as well, and it's going to make it all blend in. To do the wording for my ornament, I cut it out and then I scribble on the back with my pencil. I lay it on my star where I want it to go and I trace over it. This is just going to transfer that wording to my project. Once I get my letters transferred, I come back in with a fine tip marker and fill it in. Now on the silent, I do come back and use a brush marker and this just kind of gave it some depth and made it pop out. But this fine tip marker worked perfect on the night because it is a smaller font. Now, as I said before, I think this would be the perfect project to do with the kids. You can let them make it their own and it's the perfect time filler whenever they are out on break. They can use the silent night or any phrase that they want. 
to make a hole in this to make a hanger i used my awl that i got from hobby lobby you can get these for like two dollars and fifty cent but you could also just use a hole punch once I got a hole in the top, I pushed my cording through. I'm gonna trim it off and then I tie a knot in the top and this is going to give me a loop for hanging. The last thing I want to do is decorate it. So I used a little piece of greenery that I had left over from last year that I'm gonna glue some of these little berries in the middle of that. And once you get this on, this project is complete. For this ornament, we're going to use one of these mini grapevine wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby. You get four in a pack. It's $5.99, but they're 50% off, so they're only $3. I like getting these this time of year because I actually end up using them all year long. I'm also going to use another one of these Very Merry Christmas ornaments that I got from there as well. You've seen me use these in a couple of projects already. Now, I started off using some red ribbon to tie this ornament into the center of this wreath with, but I end up changing my mind it's just a little bit, so you'll see me cut that off and change it to some twine. I decided to go a more natural look. You can tell I had stopped, started to use the red because I'd pulled quite a bit of red stuff, but y'all, I always end up changing my mind. Now we're gonna use one of those pine garland ties that you get from the Dollar Tree. I cut it in half and then kind of form it around my wreath there and use a dot of glue to hold it in place. This is where I changed my mind about the way I was going with this. I love this ribbon that I found at Joann's. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I cut a piece of it and I form it into an oval or a loop. Then I pinch up the center and I use a piece of twine and wrap around it about four or five times and tie it into a double knot. And this is gonna give me a bow. That's when I realized I didn't need to use that red ribbon. So I took some more of that twine and used a darning needle and I just kind of thread that twine through that grapevine wreath and then I'm gonna tie it into a knot so that it will hang down into the center of my wreath. I loved how this turned out. Once we get that in there, now we're just going to fluff up our bow. You know, they all need a good fluffing. We'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right there into the middle of that garland. Now I'm gonna take some of that frosted fern that I get from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting off small pieces and gluing a couple of pieces on each side just to give it a little something extra. And then I do decide to use some of those red berries on each side as well just to give it a pop of color. To make a hanger for this, I'm gonna use some more of my twine. I thread it through my darning needle and then pull it through some of the pieces of my grapevine wreath. We're going to tie it into a knot, leaving a loop. We'll trim it up and with that, this project will be finished. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're gonna be using some shower curtain rings. I got mine from Walmart for 97 cent, but they also sell them at the Dollar Tree. Some leftover white chunky yarn that we had from another project, it came from Hobby Lobby. Some of these bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon, mine came from the Dollar Tree. Some of these 3D wooden word stickers from Hobby Lobby, they're back in the sticker section. Some of these mini gnomes from Hobby Lobby some iridescent rick rack from Hobby Lobby, some lace ribbon, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. 
Y'all, I love making personalized ornaments. I think that it's so nice to be able to look at your tree and know that you made these things. And I love having the different things on there as well. Kay and I love to show y'all how you can make easy DIY ornaments. We think it'd be fun maybe during the Thanksgiving weekend if you do this with the kids and let them make some of the ornaments. And then when they put them on the tree, they just love knowing that they did it. And I just think that it makes beautiful family memories. For these ornaments, we're going to be using shower curtains. Y'all, you can make 12 of these for 97 cents plus whatever scraps you have on hand. For these, I'm going to be using some of this leftover yarn I had and wrapping around them. There's lots of different things you could wrap these with, and we're going to do some more in a future video where we use other things. But for these three, we're going to use some of this white yarn. You're just going to secure one end with some of your hot glue, and then you just start wrapping around and around till you get to the other end, making sure you push it up next to each other. And then you're going to secure it with a little more hot glue trim it off and that's all there is to it once you have all three rings wrapped now we're going to decorate i'm going to be using some of this lace ribbon i think i got this from hobby lobby but they also have it at the dollar tree and i cut off a 16 inch piece and tie a knot in one end then I wrap it around the ring and pull that string through the loop that it makes and that's going to give us a hanger. Just make sure you pull it tight and get it straight. Then I'm going to take this little bow that I made. It's just a simple shoestring bow and glue it at the base. And we're going to use one of those little mini bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. I remove the base of it, put some hot glue on it and glue it into the middle of it at the bottom. Hold it until it sets and you have an adorable little ornament. For the next one, we're going to use the same ribbon for the hanger. I cut another 16 inch piece and tie a knot in the end, trim it up, wrap it around our ring, pull it through the loop, and there's our hanger. And then for this one, I'm going to use one of these wooden words from Hobby Lobby. They sell these back in the sticker section, and I think they are just absolutely gorgeous. You get like six, maybe seven words in a pack, and it's $4.99, but every other week they have them for 50% off, so you can get them for $2.50. I'm going to paint mine. I decided to use some of my crimson chalk paint and paint just the top of it, but that was just a last minute decision. I was going to leave this natural, and I think it would be pretty. I just decided I wanted that pop of color with it, so I painted mine. Once we get that paint and let it dry, we're just going to glue it on with a little bit of hot glue. Y'all, I could see doing a whole set of these using all of these words. How pretty would that be? To make a bow for this, I'm going to use some more of that lace ribbon. I just cut off a piece and fold the ends over each other, leaving a loop on each side. I use a little bit of embroidery thread, wrap around the center a couple of times and tie it into a double knot and trim it off. And then you have a cute little bow. We'll just fluff it out a little bit. We're going to trim up those ends there and then glue it right to the base of our hanger. And there's another little ornament. For our last one, I decided to use some of this iridescent Rick Rack. I got it from Hobby Lobby as well. I cut another 16 inch piece, tie a knot in the end, and then loop it around our ring just like we did the others. And then I'm gonna take some more of it and I wrap it around my fingers three times and cut it off. I slip it off and then fold it in half and take some more of that white thread and wrap around it a couple of times, tie it into a double knot, trim it off and then you can start pulling your loops out and fluffing it up and it gives you the prettiest little iridescent rick rack bow i love this it's kind of similar to the little um twine bows we do you're going to trim it off and then glue it right there to the base of the hanger and then i'm going to use one of these little gnomes i got this from the christmas craft section at the back of hobby lobby you get three in a pack for a dollar fifty I put some glue on his feet, a little bit on his hat, and then just stand him up in there and hold him till he sets. And that's our last adorable ornament.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this wooden initial that I got from Dollar General. They have these for a dollar and I love how thick and nice they are. Some Waverly chalk paint in white and crimson, some Mod Podge, some iridescent glitter, some red and white Baker's twine, ribbon of choice, I'm using this 580 inch satin, a heavy duty staple gun, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint my initial with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now I do paint the whole thing, front, back, and sides, because you will be able to see this from all angles when it's hanging on the tree. I love doing these quick and easy ornaments. I think that it's a great way to get the kids involved. You can get their initial and let them paint them and decorate them however they want. And they look so cute when you have them all hanging on the tree. The kids love looking for theirs. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm just going to mark off about a third of my ornament. Now, I'm only worried about the top and the sides because I'm not going to paint the back of this. I'm going to leave it that solid white. Now, you can do as much of this as you want. I just chose to do about a third. I thought that looked really nice. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and I'm going to give it two good coats on the top and the sides and I will leave it to dry. I did choose to use the crimson color but you can do any color that matches your decor. While our paint is drying, I'm going to make a bow and I'll do this slow for you. I take my ribbon and I lay it across my hand making a good sized tail. Now we're going to take it and go around behind our first finger. And because this ribbon is satin on one side, I realized I needed to twist it in the middle before I go around. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to twist it in the middle. Then I'll wrap it around my second finger coming up from behind. We'll twist it again and go right back around that first finger, making two loops on each side. Then we're going to twist it one more time and go around that second finger again. This will give you two really nice loops. Now you're going to come back up through your two fingers and you're going to trim this off, leaving yourself a good tail. You can trim this again at the end. We're going to take that bottom tail and pull it up. Then we'll take that top tail and we're going to lay it over all of our ribbon and push it through those two fingers at the bottom. You want to make sure it's below all of your ribbons. Now you're going to pull it up through the back and come around the top. And that, now that ribbon that is crossed across the top, you're going to kind of lift it up and shove the tail right underneath it and pull it through. Now tighten it up and this is going to give you an adorable little bow for the top of your ornament. Once you get it tight, you're just going to slip it off your fingers and there you have it. Now we'll remove our tape. Uh, this is always so satisfying. And then I'm going to use my Mod Podge and I'm just going to paint the top part of my ornament where it was white. You do however much you want. This is where we're going to put our glitter. I'll sprinkle my glitter on and shake off the excess. To make a hanger for this, I'm going to take my twine. I fold it in half and tie a knot in it. We'll trim off those ends flip over our ornament and use our staple gun to put this in place. It's going to hold it really well. Now all we have to do is glue our bow on the top, trim the tails, and this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pack of arabesque tiles that I got from Lowe's for $4.98. You get 15 in the pack and they make adorable ornaments. You can also pick this up at Home Depot as well. Some water slide decal paper from Hippo. Some Christmas designs that I printed out using my inkjet printer onto the water slide decal paper. I'll put a link below if you would like to have a copy of the designs. Some felt, I'm using white. Some ribbon. Some gift tissue from the party section at Hobby Lobby's. I only use two of these. 
and some permanent markers from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I did was separate my tiles. This was really easy to do. They're just glued onto this netting stuff and it peels off real easily. Then I took one of my tiles and laid it onto my felt and I just traced around it. I did this 15 times because we're gonna be making 15 um, ornaments and then I cut it out. I like doing this because I think the felt finishes off the back and makes them look more high end. Now we are going to cut out our designs from our water slide decal paper. Now this is really easy to use. This video is not sponsored by Hippo, but you guys know that I love this paper. You print using a regular inkjet printer, and then you're going to seal your design. You're gonna use a, a clear acrylic spray. I got mine from Hobby Lobby, and you're gonna coat it three times and let it dry in between. Once they're dry, you're gonna cut them out, making sure to leave a quarter of an inch border around each one. Once you get these all cut out, we are going to take a shallow bowl with some water. You soak your water slide decal in it for 30 to 45 seconds until it starts moving around. You'll feel that top start sliding. Then you're gonna lay it on your tile, hold it down with a couple of your fingers, and then use your other fingers to gently slide the paper out from under this. Once you do that, you're gonna feel that it's still gonna move around, your tile is slick, and that's good because it allows you to position it in place. Then you're just gonna take a piece of paper towel and gently blot the water out. Get as much of it out as you can, and you'll see that this is gonna start sticking. And then once you got it all out, set it aside and let it completely dry. Then you'll see that your design is melted onto your tile and y'all, these are so cute. This is such a cool way of making personalized ornaments for your tree. Now for this one, I wanted to show you how easy it is to let the kids help you with these. So we're just gonna use some jot permanent markers from the Dollar Tree. I drew on some eyes and a mouth and a carrot nose, and then I used a black permanent marker and filled in the eyes and the mouth, and I used an orange permanent marker and filled in the nose. Now it kind of bubbles up, but it makes a cool effect once it dries. Then I took a white gel marker and and put some little dots in the eyes for expression and used my black marker and colored off the top to make a hat. Now, another way to personalize these is to paint them. Y'all, this would be so much fun with the kids. Give them some paint, let their imagination run wild. They can make so many cool things, a Santa belt, a Grinch, a snowman. Y'all know I had to make a Grinch. I'm using my scallion chalk paint from Waverly, giving this two coats and letting it dry. Then once it's dry, I took a pencil and sketched in a Grinch face. And now I'm using a black permanent marker and I'm just going over the nose, the mouth, the eyebrows. And then I'll take some dark yellow paint and I'm going to paint in the eyes. This is just some acrylic paint I had on hand and let those dry. And then I'll use that permanent marker and outline the eyes and give it some pupils. And there's our little Grinch. Y'all, they could do so many things with this. I would love to see what they come up with. Another way to personalize these is with decoupage. Now I'm going to be using some of this gift tissue that you get out of the party planning section. This is what you stuff into bags. I'm using the cheetah and the plaid. My granddaughter loves cheetah, so I'm making one of these for her. I trace around my ornament onto my paper and cut it out. And then once we get these cut out, we're going to use some Mod Podge to apply them to our ornament. I put down a thin coat of my Mod Podge, and then you want to be real careful with this because this tissue is very fragile. I did have to peel it up and it worked okay, but you want to smooth out as many of the wrinkles and bubbles as you can with your fingers. Just go real easy with it so that you don't tear your paper. Once we get those down, I'm just going to add some monograms to these. I did cut them out with my Cricut machine because I didn't have any um, pill and stick on hand, but you can get pill and stick letters from any craft store, even the Dollar Tree and Walmart, and it would work for this. 
Another great way to personalize these ornaments is with photos. I'm using some of our fur baby that we recently lost. I wanted to do this for my husband. I printed them out using my inkjet printer and then I did seal it with some clear acrylic spray so that it doesn't smudge when I start to decoupage it. I trace my ornament on it and cut them out and then once I get them cut out I chose two of them that I thought would work the best. Now we're just going to use some Mod Podge. We put down a light coat and then we're going to take our picture and use some water in a spray bottle and lightly spritz the back. This just softens it up and makes it easier to apply. I stick it down to my ornament and then I smooth it out with my fingers making sure that I get all of the bubbles out. I'll show you this one more time. We'll just put down our Mod Podge and then spritz our picture and apply it. Again, this is a perfect way to personalize these. You could do all of your photos and this would be so cool. The last way we are going to do our ornaments is, yep, I'm going to make a gnome. Y'all knew I was going to have to do this, right? <laughs> I take my ornament and I trace half of it onto the back of one of those dust mops that you get from the Dollar Tree, and then I cut it out. Not going to kid, this is a mess, but it turns out so cute, y'all. You could also just use one of those fuzzy tiles. I put down some of my Fix All Adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and then I put some hot glue around the edges of my mop, and I glue it down to the bottom of this, and we have a beard. For the hat, I'm going to use part of this old dress that I got from Goodwill Outlet, but you could just use fabric. You don't have to use this. I trace it onto it, cut it out, and then I apply it the same way I did the beard. I use some Fix All Adhesive and some hot glue and glue it to the top and let it just overlap my beard. To make a nose, I'm using a half wood bead that I glue right there, right under the tip, and then I glue a pom-pom on the top. Now that we have these all decorated, we're going to finish them up. I take my ribbon and I cut 15 pieces at 5 inches, and then I'm going to attach them to the top back of my ornament with a little bit of hot glue. I just glue down each end. Then I put down some Fix All Adhesive in the center, and I use my hot glue and go around those felt pieces we cut out and attach it to the back, and that finishes it up. We'll look at this one more time. Just glue down both ends with your hot glue at the top of your ornament. Then you're going to put down some of your Fix All Adhesive, take your hot glue, go around your felt piece on the edges, and then stick it down, and that's all there is to it. Once you do these, these are finished. hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursday, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!